Pascal. <laughs> Alright, so we are unable to, to meet up with you in person to present the work to you, but it doesn't stop us. It doesn't stop us from being able to showcase all the very good works from the students. So today I would like to invite Miss Lin Lee from Nippon Pain Singapore, our senior advisor, to be our facilitator and host for today to share with you all the different work and to introduce our judges. Over to you, Miss. Well, thank you, um, Shelley. Uh, good morning again everyone and a very warm welcome to our 14 Nippon Paint Asia Young Designers Award. Finals today, yes. Everybody is excited? Good. Right. Please, um, I'd like to welcome first and foremost our distinguished judges. And uh, they are Mr. Dennis Chok, Ms. Goi Chen Ru, Mr. Leong Hong Kit, and Mr. C. Xian Chi. Um, this is Tian Zi from uh, Wing Telepathy. All right. Please allow me to explain how the judging process is going to be like today. Now, each of the finalists will be allocated 15 minutes presentation on their project. A bell will ring once when the time reaches 10 minutes and ring three times when the 15 minutes is up. Thereafter, we will open a short Q&A session to our panel of judges and the judging criteria for the interior design and architecture are as follows. Our panel of judges will allocate points according to these criteria, design concept, functionality, design innovation, sustainability and relevance, color usage, and of course, delivery and presence. All judges' decisions are final and individual scores will not be disclosed. For the interior design category today, we have five finalists uh, who will be sharing their projects with us. The judges have gone through a very rigorous uh, uh, selection and they have selected five for our finals today. Without further ado, let me start with the first finalist from the interior design category. Let's put our hands together to welcome Jessica Lim. Not for Jessica Lim. <laughs> Um, my apologies, it's Rian Veselus, right, will be our finalist today, first finalist today, yes. Um, good morning everyone, my name is Rian, um, I'm a graduate from Yang Polytechnic. Um, today, I will be sharing on a project called Kids Build, um, an interior architecture located at the heart of Fort Edding that focuses on recreational spaces for children with um, The phrase protected the free, a very simple yet interestingly very complex idea. This is the statement that sparked my concept, inspired my design, and pursued my project in scope. Um, Kidsville is a fantasy escape for children at risk. It's a children's center where ch children are given the freedom to participate in the arts, um, culture, and recreational programs under a protected home-like environment. Conceived with the intention of creating a congenial space like home, with the integration of the whimsical and playful nature of children, the main shape of the structures draws inspiration from the architectural drawing of a house perceived by a child. Moving on to my design process and context, I started off from the idea of having an enclosed and protected space from the outside, but an open um, and free space on the inside to convey the philosophy um, protected the free. Um, with that, I just integrated um, 
the massive space into multiple smaller units, still possessing that outer protection with inner openness, but now creating a more neighborly village environment. I want to see with the typology of the space itself, the herd and the children, without the feeling of complete um, enclosure. Okay, putting importance to the central open space, the units turn towards the center, a celebration and gathering point where all the children from different units can feel the I cannot hear it. I cannot hear it. Hi, can you you cannot record. Cannot record. Hi, can you hear better now? Okay. Next, pitch roofs are articulated meaningfully in varying heights to amplify the representation of a home. Lastly, in order to take advantage of the surrounding landscape, um, and the site context, the whole interior architecture embodies the Fort Canning Hill, allowing the layout to be enclosed by the park. Next, I'll be talking about my design strategy. First is the program disposal, which I made as a principle to my space planning. Each unit represents a fundamental need of a child in the order of welcome, learn, eat, play, rest, and finally, a central space celebrate each containing programs relevant to that need. Second is the interior so circulation. The interior space is a free inner permeability that allows one to easily move from one unit to another, all essentially leading to the central space celebrate. Third is the twisting of mass, which allows the provision of air circulation to move into the central space, as well as creates fav favorable views of the outdoors. Next is the elevator runways on the second floor, it forms as a connection to all the units in the second floor and acts as a shelter for the first, which also leads back to the central space. Lastly is the organic interior spill out. This blurs the barrier between the indoor and the outdoors, integrating the surrounding green greenery of Fort Canning around and within the uh, space. This encourages children to naturally move towards the outdoors, um, giving them the provision to explore, play, and move independently and not being stuck in the four, in the indoor spaces. I'll now move on to explain the units um, in depth and talk about their main spaces. Okay, the very first unit is welcome. It houses administrative usages where children are dropped off and picked up by their guardians. In order to encourage independence, there are shoe racks and lockers built into the wall and move end um, where the children can arrange their belongings as soon as they enter. A transparent play area is also in place to allow children to wait and play independently but still allowing that visibility of adult um, supervision. Connected to this is the learn unit where the provision of edification happens. Different learning facilities can be found here such as the art and music studios, counseling and seminary rooms. Um, for the for the parents and the library, which I'll be talking more in depth um, in. The library is a double space, um, the double space, um, double space with high ceiling where parents can view their children from the second floor. The bookshelves, which act as a wall itself, integrate space, um, furniture, and structure together, creating a multi, um, multi, multifunctional space through different conditions. This shelving system extends across the library ceiling, which also incorporates light panels for natural, natural daylight to penetrate through the space. Small nooks are also in place where children can crawl into and climb into to read, as well as windows of varying heights where they can peek and view the outdoors. Moving on to the next unit is EAT, which houses programs such as the rooftop garden and the children cafeteria. The children's cafeteria is an open and transparent space. It is situated right in front of the children's courtyard and also has an integral view of the cityscape on the other side. In addition, because the cafe is enclosed with glass lighting panels, guardians who come to pick up their children should be able to enjoy the view of their children playing at the courtyard. Next is play, 
where the indoor and the outdoor play then is located. The perspective shown on the screen shows the outdoor play obstacle course. This structure takes on a modular approach where each cube is created in different variations, creating a gridded facade and essentially forming a jungle gym that encourages freeform and interactive play. Besides this is the um, rest unit, where the children can rest after a day full of activities. It includes an outdoor seating area on the first floor, movie screening on the second, and sleeping pot on the top floor. Finally, we move on to the unit celebrate, located at the heart of Kidsville. The central courtyard acts as a gathering point and main activity area where, ch where children can interact and play freely. At the very center situates a future play staircase that is integrated into the slope of Fort Canning Hill, which merges different functions such as a sleeping area, slide, tree house, as well as a play cave under the bleachers, allowing children to creatively play and interact with one another. It also creates a visual focus that can be viewed from other units surrounding it. As a conclusion, I'd like to come, come back to the phrase protected by free. With Kidsville, I hope to support a new approach to what protection means in designing for children. It is not the bubble approach which results in soft designs that we are used to, but the idea of children being able to explore, move independently, and even allow them to experience a sense of controlled danger, all to help them develop happily and holistically. After all, our future lies within our children. That is all for my presentation today. Thank you. Thank you for the very clear and concise presentation. Um, the judges uh, will now uh, have their question and answers. Sorry, I didn't get your, your name. Rian. 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 Hi, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Um, there were the visuals that we saw were, you have updated some of them, right? Mm. Since. I have used yeah. the ones that I have sent. Mm. 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 Well, it does lend focus to the spaces mm. more yeah. in, in a much more detailed way than we saw on the panel. So that was incredibly helpful. Mm. Uh, but before we go into, into talking more about the projects, can you lead us to the entry? sequence of the space. That's one mm. that's something that we struggle with. Okay. Trying to understand how do you arrive into Actually, this village. Um, so this is the side plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a driveway over here where um cars can go through up the hill sure. and into this um like entrance entry point. Mm. Mm. What's the building directly opposite? Um this that? is Minist uh uh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, ROM. ROM. Registry oh, okay. of Marriages. Oh, yeah, not important. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, the reason why I put it here is because um, I feel like it's a place where families uh, are formed. Yeah. Yeah, remind <laughs> It's right next to ROM. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remind yeah. of the danger. <laughs> <laughs> this is your warning. <laughs> Okay, sure. Uh, so we drop off at the car drop off, okay. and could you mm. lead us through okay. the building uh, or the interiors when okay. someone drops off from the car porch? Because okay. that part we find a bit ambiguous, mm. at least from your planning. So when you enter, you mm. are first. Um, what you will first see is the locker walkway that I've shown just now, mm -hmm. and then right here is the. Mm -hmm. There's an entry point to the children's courtyard. Yeah. Okay. And then you can also go um to this direction where there is an outdoor seating area. Mm -hmm. And in there you can also um enter through the other units. Mm -hmm. So there's entry points to the learn, to mm -hmm. the cafe, to the indoor play area as mm -hmm. well as the rest unit, which is this is the sitting um outdoor seating area. Mm -hmm. This is the first floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are actually there is a staircase over here mm. as well as um lift. Mm. a lift on two ends of the yeah. um building. Mm. So when you go up, mm. you can either go from here where this is the kind of like an open seminar.
the room where you can view the mm. children from um, below, which is the library. Mm. Yeah, and it's connected to this um, garden. Mm. And there's also um, this sitting space that actually is integrated into the roof. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm. And through that, you can actually, it's like a loop mm. where you can go from one place to another and just around. Mm. And there's also this. Um, feature staircase where you can go down from the second floor to the central courtyard. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is the outdoor play area over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And the third floor is actually. Oh, there's more. Yeah, this is the third floor. <laughs> um, and this is the last floor. Yeah. Um, this is the garden, another garden on mm -hmm. the third floor. Um, mm -hmm. and then this is the sleeping pot. On the third, I placed it on the very end because I mm. wanted it to be more private and mm. be yeah. more, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you very much for that walkthrough. Uh, I think it, and I'm glad that you did ask you to walk us through the floor plans because uh, obviously you have, you have spent a lot of time and thought into the entire chain of spaces when you string them up like necklaces and you split into different levels and at each level you kind of integrate um, ideas of what courtyards and gardens could be so um, it's great and you also kind of activated the roofscape um, into part of these interactive playable space um, so I think that there's a lot of value in that and I think one of the first response that we had was that um, we want to see more because uh, we want to see more of the spaces because um, if we were to go back to your 3D views maybe not this one um, the one where you had the skylight uh, I, I, well that yeah it's like gestures like that um, where the interior space interacts with the architecture um, we love and you also explain that now in the interior architecture is devised as these shelves where kids are encouraged to to, to interact with um, climb into windows peek through at the surroundings so um, a really really great project actually I gotta say uh, I can see and appreciate the work that goes into it but I think and, and what's amazing about our team is have the children come to life? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, an amazing thing about this scheme is that on plan it looks quite rational, mm. very neat, but um, three dimensionally it has a certain dynamism mm. and playfulness, which also works very well. We had slight apprehension about the form because it, it was quite reminiscent of the Ditra house. Uh, I'll watch. No. I didn't know that. Yeah, but you did explain that the form is derived from a child's imagination or uh, impression of what that archetypical house okay. is. So there's some value in that. Like maybe you want to go into even a step further and exaggerate those forms so it breaks away from something that's familiar but I mean that's an aside because the value of I think your spaces are in the spaces itself interiors mm -hmm. not so much in the exterior form um, the deck we, we do need to push you a little bit more on the finesse of the deck though plants are beautifully drawn the diagrams look well, basically, this presentation looked like you cobbled it together quite last minute. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's the truth, but I mean, it, it did help us lot. Mm -hmm. But things like you know, just looking at this, if you have those kind of 3D views, the black lines immediately immediately makes it look like some cartoon drawing, mm -hmm. especially around the chairs. So that kind of distracts. But more importantly is the sense of scale. Um, in every single image, when you montage figures in. Mm. Uh, the sense of scale is quite off. Um, people in the foreground seem much larger or people in the background are larger than those in the foreground. So uh, pay attention to that because it takes away from our enjoyment of 
these slides la. Okay. Um, and they are just talking about this diagram, so you do like arrows and all that. Uh -huh. um, I think I, I really like how you sequence the presentation in a way that leads us through the plans, but you know, those arrows that look quite slipshod mm -hmm. next to the very clean architectural line. So, um, well, packaging, like, oh. sorry I spoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> Please go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll leave it to the rest of the jury. Maybe I start. Uh, we we are right. Rian. 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 Uh, Rian. Mm. Hi, I'm I'm Senro from Goy Architects. I just wanted to like kind of congratulate you in kind of like explaining the concept of like protected but free. Mm. I think that is like a very strong uh concept that you kind of brought through with your volume and also the spaces that is within. And I think that the the interiors as well as like the whole form and the execution of it is really quite very detailed actually and mm. I, I think it's very well done so whatever comments that we are making is just uh, on a very high level okay so no but listen to them yeah uh, if you want to we yeah. want to push you yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I think um, for me maybe just one comment because Dennis has covered quite a lot already I think when as especially when you're designing for kids mm -hmm. uh, you really need to think about the proportion of everything inside mm. so like if I look at this imagery then immediately the things that kind of struck me off is really the height of the shelves. Mm. Even though you kind of put it at the bottom, but a lot of majority is actually on the mm. top. Mm. Even though we encourage them to go up and down, but it's just that it feels um, the proportion of the space, especially like the height of the ceiling or stuff like that could actually be uh, lowered a little bit or like the shelves could be easily more accessible. If I look at the entry area whereby you have your shoes, mm. there's shelves that's on top then it's like oh, okay mm. my small little kids uh, would not be able to kind mm. of access it independently mm. as what you're talking about yeah. right so i think those if you can kind of uh, develop it a little bit more then it will be really stronger to convince people that oh it's really catered for kids and proportions is all for kids and stuff like that so that's mm. something that you need to look for second thing that i think that probably you need to uh, be a bit careful about is maybe like the organization of the spaces mm -hmm. so i understand you want to have one space for uh, one uh, function but usually with kids it's that they will also sleep where they do their activity so it's very hard to usher kids from like this to here to here to here to here mm -hmm. so probably you have to think about like spaces to be able to like keep away and then they can roll out their maps they can start to have a sleep so you need to mm -hmm. think about spaces whereby they can close up to make a, like a like a sleeping area you know mm. stuff like that so that's something that could improve your scheme as well mm. the third point is just the connectivity on the external side it has to do with your architectural form mm. because i see the termination of the roof eaves to the facade is straight on mm -hmm. so there's just no way for any kind of shelter of rain and stuff like that which in our tropical climate this is something that you need to kind of think a little bit about maybe that would also enhance the the, the connectivity between not just loop like this, but also loop it back. That means you complete the circle rather than just going you and then I have to you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's my comment. Yes. Yeah. That's an architectural oh. comment. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Cannot, is it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in all that you went from, you know, where where do kids like keep their things? Yeah. Balance to, like, wrong. Architectural form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> balance comment. <laughs> Actually, a question I have is uh, you have this uh, central courtyard, right? Yes. And um, maybe maybe I missed I missed that part, but it seems like uh, the kids can just walk off, uh, walk out to the outside without any supervision, right? So, uh, is there any <laughs> um, thought about enclosure? Like, how do you make it make the whole space enclosed and protected, but not having the enclosure scene? Can we go to your yeah. slide of the maybe the first entry yeah, yeah. overall view? As in the, the which the entryway, the first view. I think you had a shoe rack. Oh, okay. Actually, that was my comment for the reception. You can come in, you yeah. see through, but you know that the kids can just kind yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you're designing spaces for children to gather, right? I think it's very important to emphasize the. How do you kind of separate that more enclosed and private part where only kids and the teachers are, and then the more public part where parents come pick up, suppliers come deliver things, uh, public might walk into your building. How how do you keep those two parts very very separate and secure? Mm -hmm. I think if you can somehow 
work that into your scheme, I think you'll make uh, the whole project even uh, stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other point I had was, uh, you mentioned, um, as a part, you mentioned about the ventilation, the building mass, mm -hmm. encouraging ventilation. So, the, so all the buildings, are they meant to be uh, naturally ventilated? Um, I feel like it's encouraged for natural ventilation, but I think um, ideally, I would want it to be naturally ventilated, but mm. I think in our context, yeah. I think air conditioning <laughs> would be... Yeah, so <laughs> so I think you need to maybe <laughs> resolve uh, uh -huh. that part, yeah. like, yeah. like be sure of what, what, yeah. what, what do you want to do, like yeah. if you say, okay, naturally ventilated, then you have to design yeah. the mm. building to be naturally ventilated, because uh, you have glass, right, at the yeah. ends of the, the house shapes, so I think it kind of counters what you said about the uh, natural ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> so so maybe uh, something for you to think about. Well, if natural yeah. ventilation is something that you want to achieve, then let it inform your interiors. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, in this view in particular, if this is a naturally ventilated lobby, mm -hmm. first there will not be these full height glass panels where it's an instant barrier. Mm -hmm. Actually, I also have issues. Uh, this is something I didn't speak about as well. Uh, I have slight issues with you kind of putting kids in these glass cages, <laughs> like the <they're> zoo animals. <laughs> um, yeah, and also, I guess, realistically, these glass panels that don't have any markings or graphics on it, kids are just going to run and slam into it. So, kind of visibility. La. But let's say you take that queue and you drive various screens and of different heights to create privacy and safety, but also allow ventilation to flow very freely through your space. I think that will make your scheme mm. a lot stronger, actually. It's considered for our climate, la, and we made use of something as simple as screens mm. to really accomplish a lot of things. Think like security, yeah. that was that was great. Think like ventilation, it gives you certain height variation gives you a certain aesthetic and material language. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Rianne, and thank you, thank you, judges, for that wonderful uh, pointers for Rianne. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome the next finalist, finalist number two, Jessica Lim. Jessica? The real Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Hey, what do you know so much about kids? I don't know, I just imagine. Huh? I just imagine. <laughs> then you have a very good imagination. Empathy. Uh -huh. uh -huh. okay. How many kids do you have in school? <laughs> 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 and then, and then, 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 then back. Then <laughs> All good then, now we will unmute. Right, Jessica, the stage is yours. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Hi. I'm Jessica Lim from LaSalle College of the Arts, and today I'm going to share the idea of my project through the eyes of a potter. Through the eyes of a potter, the one who makes pots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And 
this project is for my friend, a supporter, living in Jalan Besar area. So, if you guys are wondering where is Jalan Besar, Jalan Besar um, is located at the center of the city, and it was once the industrial area of Singapore. So basically, um, since it is the industrial area, a lot of people um, are stressed and drained at the end of the day due to um, the daily chores that takes a toll on their mental health. And I think it's neither fancy nor expensive for this place, but it's still a beautiful place lah, for my friend. She's in love with the texture, the smell in the air, and the traces it leaves as an old neighborhood near the city. Here in Jalan Besar, I know why she liked it most. She got to work with like-minded individuals. There are woodworkers, metal crafters, tools and electrical suppliers, and not to forget the friendly uncle there. But after all these years of hard work, her business is slowing down. In the recent years, she don't feel her craft as just a hobby that is being done just to pass time. So my question is now, can something as small and simple as pottery be given a new life? So me and my friend, we talked through about this thing and um, we tried to reintroduce pottery in a more sustainable way as well as a process that can help to relieve the stress for the moment. And in the fast-paced society that we're living in today, this troll culture and discard mentality is very common. And this inclusion of kinsuji into the concept of pottery is the most suitable, the most appropriate. And a little bit about kinsuji, it is the Japanese art of rejuvenating a broken pottery piece um, by using gotlake um, to make it together. And this concept of kintsugi becomes a metaphor um, in this project um, and as you guys can see it is a place for people to embrace the flaws in themselves and just to celebrate these imperfections as part of life. So through this ideation process my friend told me that she wanted to show the world that the breaking process can somehow awful but can be beautiful as well the fixing is rejuvenating and it reminds us that as human beings we should embrace it as part of our life so now where can be a better place for this new pottery center of course my friend's home she's been growing up um, there for her life and she's living there currently and there's nothing fancy about the site um, it is still in the heart of Jalan Besar, located at Tarik Road. And it is a three multi story concert and old shop house with um, rusty facade and peeling paint. I personally don't like the site, and I feel it is quite hidden in between the two other neighboring buildings. There's the church, and there's the commercial building on the site. But as a designer, I respect my friend, and I want to look for potential in designing the space, which is what she's chosen here. And there goes my design intervention. So first of all, we went to the site, we observed the site, and I decided to retain some of the facade. This one. And yep. So um, it started by considering which one to retain and which one to um, be intervened in a way. And then as a designer, I looked for possibility where I can gain the new um, design intervention. In a sense, a space to do my design intervention. And now it is the courtyard. So. To make it um, seamlessly doable for the public, eliminate the existing uh, gates from the uh, from the front of the shop house and the back of the shop house to allow the public to freely come to my space and see what's gonna happen inside it. 
And as I want it to be as discreet as possible, in respect to the site, in respect to my friends, um, I decided to sacrifice um, the volumes, the design, um, and decided to retain uh, the courtyard as a form of physical respite. It's because I want people to enjoy also the courtyard as this short house is the only short house that's got uh, the courtyard while the rest don't. After that, I decided to separate the volume into two, two non-intermingling ones to be intersected and connected and form the middle ground. I hope with this strategy of intersecting spaces um, will hopefully help the bridge the old and the new, as well as to promote collaboration through the common area and receive attention from the public. So the first level is going to be, all the levels is going to um, be the mix of the old and the new programs as well. And the first level is the reception. There's reception, Kintsuji gallery, gallery, exhibition space, raw material and equipment storage. And then on the second level, there's workshop, fragment room, master class office, meeting room, and tool storage. And lastly, on the third level is the library of pottery. So, the new pottery journey starts from the building first level by a very wide entrance from the five foot way. It's the five foot way. Um, as much as we love privacy as a person, um, I decided to separate the master craftsman circulation path and my circulation path as a public so coming to the space um, into two. So the master craftsman will go through this. Um, ideally, he she will go through that space, and the public will come through the reception. Um, and as we go through the reception space, we'll see a Kinsley art display that will visually trigger people to understand more about this. You guys might be wondering why something so simple and nonsense like display can help people to understand. I think it's the visual connection it draws um, from the stuff that we put there. So it kind of helps people to get the gist of what they're going to do in this inside the space as well. And the collection also will also guide um, the master craftsman and the public to the upper level to meet. And on the second level, it is the middle ground where the master craftsman and the public meet inside the meeting room before they go to the fragment room. And for those who have no idea what fragment room is, fragment room is basically a space to smash, throw, and destroy things. And the, the rationale behind this fragment room is because um, since we don't have that luxury to throw stuff in our home because my mom's going to be angry. So there's this space for fragment room where people can freely throw stuff to let loose of themselves. <coughs> so in this double volume space fragment room, um, what's going to happen is there's this fragmentation process and the workshop process simultaneously being done together. And the terracing floor levels, I believe by designing these dynamic floor levels, will indirectly give like a safe space in between um, the master craftsman and the one who's doing the workshop. So coming to the last um, level, which can, li can only be accessed from the master craftsman. Um, Jessica, you have one and a half minutes left. I would suggest you okay. quickly run yeah. this through. So it is only accessible with the master craftsman access. And what we can expect is to see painting and trimmings being posted together. And there's an outdoor reading space where people can unwind and find inspiration for the new pottery creation. So to sum up our dream, I hope uh, my design can put together the old and the new to help bridge the gap between my friend and the public and celebrate many, many intersections as part of life. Just like Kinsugi, which revolves around the idea of instilling perfection in the imperfection, the design is a statement that 
just because something was once broken doesn't mean it won't have a future. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. And now we open the floor for the judges to deliver their comments. Can I steal this? Why? <laughs> you don't like it, right? You I said don't you, like you it. don't like the set. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. like the set. Maybe, can, can you explain more about uh, your understanding of Shinsu G? Because to, to me, to me, right, I, I, I thought it was interesting in a way because I think Kinsu G, I mean, to me, Kinsu G is the, the art of repairing like this broken business, but it never, I mean, your, your idea of adding the fragmentation room is actually, it's actually an area to actually release stress, right? Yeah. Or something, something quite new because they never actually state who breaks the, who breaks <laughs> the, the glasses, right, in the first place. Hmm. Yeah. So, so with, with that also part, part of the, part of the idea in, in crafting this uh this, yeah, this yeah, place. Yeah. So before they do the kinsuji they need ideally they have to go to the fragment room first to mm. release mm. their emotions and then they can do the kinsuji. Yeah uh, but Jessica I think you mm. are missing the point of what Chen Sing is talking about. Yeah. Because the whole philosophy of Kinsuji is about this um, layering of history, right? Yeah. Mm. It's about how you have an object and then you don't throw away when it's broken, you try to repair it, and in the process of repairing it, you have actually like kind of accumulated s several kind of events and mm. then you have this appreciation of these objects, right? Mm. So what you're doing here is mm. that you are creating this space. Um, we'll, we'll come to design later. I'm just talking about the philosophy behind your... Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're, you're, you're creating a space whereby you are first the act of destroying and yeah. then you put it back together so it 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 kind of like reduces the sophistication the of poetry uh, or, or yeah the poetry of Kim Suji. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it feels like it's again it's like one of those very consumerism kind of uh mm. feeling of like mm. uh Kim Suji. like i feel mm. like the, the the whole the whole philosophy of Kim Suji is lost mm. because of that because it's not about purposefully like damaging it and then putting back together, you know. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but I mean, but that, that aside, right, uh, mm -hmm. that, that thinking line aside, I, I also appreciate that you, you kind of like have this very uh, exhibitionist kind of like uh, space, which is kind of, it's quite nice to contrast between <coughs> like the old and the new, so that you kind of pull people inside. Um, the other concepts about like courtyard spaces is something that I, I hope that you actually, I wish that you actually could have developed it a little bit more, mm -hmm. especially in terms of like how you're going to um, use the space, whether it's ventilated or non-ventilated. Because you know with the ceramics, if you burn the ceramics and if you kind of like mm -hmm. uh, make new ceramics or whatever it is, you really need an open space or at least an mm -hmm. oven or stuff like that, which is very hot. Mm -hmm. So I wonder where those space is at and yeah. And, and, and sorry, one last point, one last point. Mm. The, your friend's, um, your friend's uh, ceramic space, right? I just wonder like whether do they even have that Kim Suji kind of philosophy in their family line, you know, because it's such a Japanese concept, right? It's like, mm. so I just wonder whether we are like just adapting concepts from other culture and just say, okay, now this, Tiong, this yeah, now we just like, oh, because it's so uh, in right now. So let's make this whole Singaporean pottery place become a Kim Suji mm -hmm. exhibition yeah. area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also very problematic because because then we can never grow our own culture, you know. We are always like mm. adapting with the other culture in that sense. So, so that's my in terms of mm. like the concept point of view. Execution wise, you're always done very well. Your presentation is mm. always very good. I love the way that you can like speak first person and be able to bring us in with words and imagery. You can paint this story inside. Just mm. philosophically, you need mm. to be a bit more vigorous yeah. because you have the potential. You yeah. have that. Yeah. You are very talented. Yeah. It's just you need to like think whether this is really what yeah. you want. But yeah. that's the fundamental issue here. If you <laughs> cannot address or fully satisfy your intentions, mm. which is to, I don't know what it is to be honest, uh, what you want to draw from. Mm. We see a semblance of poetics there. Mm. Actually, well, um, going backwards 10 million steps, like, the long and short of what Miss Goy has said is that we are... We want to appreciate the con conceptual and philos philosophical groundings of this piece. We see an inkling of it, but we are not convinced 
Uh, but though we see a lot of opportunities and potential, in fact, we didn't. We we, we this scheme we pulled in at the last minute, because we saw that remnants of you know the brokenness, fixing that, yeah. and celebrating the cracks, uh, in life as well as in the program lab. So I thought we spent a lot of time on the narrative, building that up, but we kind of lost focus there. Like you spend so much attention on your friend, there's something very dodgy going on there. Mm. <laughs> this friend <laughs> <laughs> that you're so close to, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of imagery attached to it, a lot of poetics, but you know how the process of where things get broken, yeah. um, and what happens to that, and where does it come from, yeah. that kind of circle or that loop mm. is not thought through mm. or thought about at all. Mm. In fact, you're like, oh, maybe this person can be using that. Maybe this person. You need to be quite clear about it, I find. Um, what Zhen Ru said about courtyard and then she drew back to the kiln, mm. right? Um, being the, at the heart of it. Um, mm. The process of making and the process of something that generates heat and warmth and light that could also animate your scheme a little bit, uh, I think could help. Mm. But I really think about, I mean, who does, like, and what happened to those mesh things? Um, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. I find that the, the, the spaces are very undefined. I cannot see the spaces in your, like in the in this model and all, I, what, I, what I appreciate is the fragmentation. On plan, it seems, it's like the opposite. On plan, it's very dynamic. Mm. But when it's built, it kind of feels very too perfect. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it's all very unconsolidated thoughts. Lah, but I do have a lot of response to what yeah. I saw. I, mm. I'll, 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 I'll hand this over to... Yeah, I, 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 I think what's missing in your whole scheme is the idea of rehabilitation, mm -hmm. which is what uh, Kizuki is all about. Mm -hmm. Your your scheme is about destruction and fragmentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kizuki is about making things whole again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but your scheme is it remains fragmented even after you put it back together. Mm -hmm. It's maybe you put it the wrong way around. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it, you, you maybe you could have applied the idea to uh, maybe at the urban level you said you don't like the site, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like there's a courtyard and it feels like there's a building missing there. So mm -hmm. you, you you could have maybe tried to fill in that, that crack in the urban fabric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you also, mm -hmm. you said, oh, you retain the site as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But then you, you went ahead to yeah. guard the whole of the existing building. Mm -hmm. And you're just keeping the facade. So keeping the facade, it's not the same as retaining the site. Mm -hmm. So maybe something for you to think about. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think uh, the part about having display um, kind of like cases uh, along some of the walls, I thought that was mm -hmm. a nice idea that maybe you could develop a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I think it will add, add a lot more layer and uh, depth mm -hmm. to your whole uh, spatial experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, one last question is, uh, what what what's in the library of uh, pottery? Yeah. It is actually um, it's like the space um, to create new pottery creation, because um. Create to create or to archive. Mm -hmm. If you say if you call it a library, I would say yeah. it's an archive okay. of pottery yeah. pieces. Mm -hmm. So, oh. so is it for books? Is it for pots? Is it for a place for for you to watch videos of how people make mm -hmm. pots? I think it's quite different because yeah. it's so uh, hands on in a sense. Yeah. I'm trying to defy something that library already has, which yeah. is actually they're using a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. So this no wait. So what is the library of pottery? Yeah. Uh, so so books it's like are... the idea of like. Uh. Gaining inspiration and... No, no, not aspiration. The space itself, what is it? So what do you is do? It, what do you is do it a display it? of pottery pieces? Is it of books? Is it of video contents? Digital yeah. media? Yeah. What is it? Oh. What is it? If you cannot answer that, then it's... Yeah. It could yeah. be related to the site, you know? Like, I thought you, you selected Jalan Basar because, like, like maybe, maybe there were some potters around the area and then you collect, mm. collect a series of, like, very yeah. old, old things that, that originated yes. from the area. Yes. Right? Like, and, then, and then yours is, like, something 
as an evolution to what they have there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it could be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, when yeah. we go to like uh, when we visit ceramic factories, right? What they like to do is they have a collection of glazes colors mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. very hard to get the exact glaze color, right? Mm -hmm. So they usually mm -hmm. would have like they will just do a masterpiece like master one just one slot and then they'll write down the the composition like oh you use uh, what chemicals mm -hmm. what so usually they they have that kind of documented quite nicely so let's say if you are talking about king to z which is like there is this like uh crack that blue that you use right that there's also many different colors right you could mm -hmm. also think about archiving yeah. those then yeah. when people go there then they can like oh i match this color this you know then it's really a important library otherwise if it's just books then um mm -hmm not really helpful pots yeah. also yeah. not really helpful yeah yeah. Mm. yeah yeah i'm gonna throw you a bone here can it not be the just really like a memorial for the fragmented pieces instead of you know mm. complete perfect what pottery like pieces pots that are like 95 percent complete you're missing the one piece that yeah after yeah. you fragment it you don't know where yeah, that monument piece will to go. Incomplete. Yeah. <laughs> no wait but um yeah there's something quite missing there but oh like again we see a lot of potential but i think what kit said earlier was really hit it right on the spot so like what mm. i understood from what he said or describing your work like is you were really mm. quite um, you're putting yourself into the, a very violent position. You are mm. smashing things. Mm. You are still in that fragment room kind of a mode. Mm. But you should maybe uh, approach this project as if you were a member. You were going through the process of King yeah. Sui, right? You mm. see, you spot the cracks through the, yeah. through, through the urban fabric, through the sites, and you try to make something beautiful through it instead mm. of you know, smashing it up mm. and then just, just trying to, to yeah, just, to, from, just to heal, from yeah, 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 heal the, the, the thing from, from the injury you created. Yeah, maybe <laughs> like this scheme, you just overlap with the existing yeah, building, yeah. just find yeah. that in between. Yeah, the yeah. overlay and make those the key spaces. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just a shift in how, what, who you see yourself mm. being the author of this project. Yeah. Are you the one who comes in and smashes things up mm. and then create a, a, this new form, right? That is really a new invention. Mm. Or do you want to come in and really observe things for what they are, whether you like it or not? Maybe that's a problem. You don't appreciate mm. it. You don't like it, so you want to get it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Like I want to kintsugi or <laughs> your design. <laughs> <laughs> how many years can you go around? Right? How many? Uh, how many steps can you? Can you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Helpful okay. or not? Helpful. Yeah. Not confusing. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you, judges. Thank you. Thank you. We like to now welcome our third presenter. That will be Vanessa Vijaya. Vanessa Vijaya from Nanyang Bagul Naka. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Vanessa Merujaya, and uh, I'm from Nanya Academy of Fine Arts. And today I'll be presenting my project with the title Semi Pavilion. Uh, as someone, so this project is actually very personal to me, as someone who has grew up in, in the island of Bali. 
So I have witnessed this contrast between the wealthy part of Bali and also the poor area of East Bali. So there are three key issues that I would like to raise here. One being the poverty house of Bali. The Munti Gunung village, so the women from the village and they would, they would travel to the tourist pack area with their children to beg. And secondly is the lack of job opportunities where this uh, due to the secluded area of the village and the inability to grow crops due, the, due to the barren dry area and this results in the lack of job opportunities hence the future development could help the could help the could help the the could help to improve the social infrastructure of this village number three is the fragile tourism as the COVID pandemic has highlighted this of the fragility of just relying solely on tourism, it definitely made me think how we could make this better, not just relying on tourism itself. And this next one shows the site analysis. So the chosen site is actually located in the Karangasan district of Bali, where it's known as the most peaceful areas of Bali. And also it uh, shows the existing social enterprise and the condition of the place. And then number three is the village itself. And this photograph shows how the women of Montegunum community, uh, it is the glue that keeps the community strong. So the concept itself is actually uh, the traditional philosophy of Balinese lifestyle, which is called the Trihita Karana. And this symbol here, it shows the three components bring together and it creates a harmonious and balanced relationship. So this montage will show how I have adapted the concept of space itself. As the center of orientation is called Nata in Balinese or we call it courtyard, it is the embodiment of symbiotic relationship between the user, the internal space and the surrounding nature. So this makes me think like how we could make uh, help the post pandemic travel. So this uh, point of view is focusing on the social, economic and environmental and territorial point of view. Number one is through ecotourism, through a diversifying and shifting to a more tourism uh, tourism models and event investing new strategies to that could help the recovery through a human oriented tourism and a resilient and self-sustaining social infrastructure. Number two being a development tool that could help the strengthen the livelihood of the village through local job creation and putting the people's first. Number three is the new demand, the new and different demand as the urge to finally escape the confines of home. This, uh, this project aims to explore the area, the new approach with the nature and to enjoy the tranquility and the privacy through escaping the overcrowding and also to deliver new authentic experiences. So this is some findings that is very charming to the village itself. It's the handpicked windsor flower, the untouched beauty of East Valley and the handcraft and also the herbal drink. So Sunny Pavilion is an experiential community space that focuses on empowering the people itself through recreational learning and um, education that could create a new model of ecotourism. And it also serves as a platform for the people of Montibunu to learn new skills that encourage the better livelihood and attract new visitors from, to, uh, from recreational learning that could help them to appreciate the local culture and enjoy the environment responsibly. So I'll bring you through the user experience journey. So the first one is hosted in the workshop area where it offers the user to get to know each other. And number two is to engage one's senses and uh, enter the wonderful world of the Montigunung Tanis produce, which is, which is located in the drink bar area. Number three is to explore, to explore the local cuisines of Montigunungs. And number four is to ex 
exposed and it showcases the cultural wonder of Mutigunung's community. Number five is located in the courtyard itself as a platform to showcase the Mutigunung works or even to inspire others. And this perspective shows the entrance experience where the form of the building itself is actually uh, inspired by the typology of traditional Balinese pavilion and by inverting the lines and adapting sustainable strategies such as the rainwater collection. And this view shows the courtyard area and the workshop. So I have also um, did some research on the local sitting culture where people would sit on the floor and it has been adapted through the space and applied throughout the space from the diagram shown. So this view um, is from the workshop area where you can see there is a, a pivot door system that can allow the flexibility of usage. It can be joined or separated as two different rooms. And this section shows the, strat the sustainable strategies such as the rainwater collection and also the air circulation system. So this uh, shows like the drainage system, how it is drained. So the section shows and the it's actually the gutter at the end of the building where the rainwater is drained. Uh, this studio shows the experiment bar and the tasting table with, where the user could experience the refreshing taste of Multigunung uh, organic botanicals. So this two views is the food hall and the pavilion. So Sunni Pavilion aims to empower the community through consultation. So it provides a, a solution for a self-sustaining infrastructure. Number two is the communities where uh, the commu where we are putting the peoples first and to create the local jobs for the community around. And number three is the new approach. is where people, where the user could experience the new approach of tourism and, ap uh, and appreciate the beauty of the sustainable model of tourism. And this is the view of the courtyard where it is the embodiment of a space where positive interaction and relationship happens between the user, internal space, and the surrounding nature. It is a multi-purpose space that can be used to showcase the work or, or the events from the local people. And lastly, this is the material selection where it, it creates a warm and friendly ambience to the space. And I also have the video that you can see.
Thank you, Vanessa. We now open to the judges for their questions, comments, and advice for Vanessa. Can you explain again, like why, like how this helps in the tourism over the area? Like you're talking about how this will, this is another way of like viewing, like eco tourism, right? Oh uh, yes. So uh, what I'm uh, trying to explain here is where this Sydney Pavilion aims to be the new model of eco tourism, mm. where where it acts as a development tool, so it could help the livelihood of the people, and secondly. It focus on local job creation and thirdly like to serve the new demand of tourism so people could experience the local authentic uh the community and also enjoy the environment responsibly mm. but but say like 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 what's happening now like there's no tourists then how does how does the how does this actually function this serves as the community space for the local people where they mm. could produce or uh, make handicraft and usually what's happening right now in Bali is mm. the local tourists from other islands, as in Jakarta and Surabaya, they mm. will go to Bali. Mm. So mm. this serves as the new tourism spot for the local tourists. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, maybe if you go back to your plan. Yeah, yeah, I think this one, this one? yeah, this is okay. Yeah, mm. maybe just to start, Vanessa, you, you did a very good job. I just want to let you know that your graphics, mm. your perspectives, everything is very good. Yeah. Your rendering is very beautiful and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So right now, we are going to go like hard and deep, yeah? Mm. And uh, <laughs> She's talking about herself. No, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> and and why, why I think we need to have this conversation is that there is a few... Mm. Uh, very key points that we really need to address. Mm. So you talk about this reinvention of ecotourism. Mm. And we are talking about this uh, area being at the north eastern yeah. side of yes. Bali, which is very unaccessible because the airports are all based in uh, um, the southern side, right? In that sense. So you are, first of all, you're expecting uh, people to travel all the way up. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is that I... I wanted to understand like your scheme in terms of like um, is there ways that people could be accommodated over there mm. to kind of stay in a space for a longer duration so the first few questions that I want to ask you is like even though we shouldn't go into the business model but you really also need to think about like how is the revenue gen generated um, uh, that's number one and basically that will also shape how you need to have the spatial kind of uh, arrangement within this village so that's that's the first thing that I want to talk about. The second thing that I want to talk about is that um, it, in the end, it still looks like a traditional potato head concept. Like it is still a tourism facing kind of a effect mm. whereby the local people will come dress very nicely and then mm. come and serve somebody that's coming in. So it's still not fundamentally uh, kind of like addressing this change of ecotourism that you're talking about. Mm. When we, what I envision with this change of ecotourism is that this is the community village. That means mm. I don't have spaces that is like table sitting and educating people. It's just the community, the village is using this compound and whoever that is wandering inside would have a very authentic kind of space to be with the villagers. And when there is no, when there is no uh, people coming to vi visit, it's still fine because they are going on with their daily lives yeah. and they are producing and they are selling in the market mm. and stuff like that. So. If, if that were to be the case, then if I look at your plan, because it will still be a served and be served kind of a situation. And the materials used are oh, very beautiful, but I'm just thinking like in terms of the upfront cost, the maintenance of it, I mean, mm. and like maybe it could be a little bit um, even more raw, like it could even be like even more simple in terms of the construction because of the cost and stuff like that. And then the spaces could be crafted more for the villagers to use as their daily lives rather than them waiting for somebody to come into the space and you serve them. So small little concepts like you talk about how enjoying the cuisine of the space. Then I see a serve kitchen like 11 is the kitchen and then you have the 14 which is the food hall. 
So it still separates, right? It still separates this idea of like, I bring the food to the table and somebody enjoy it and I clean it out. You want them to be in the process. You want them to be foraging in the farms, taking stuff, going to the kitchen, cooking it, and then sitting down with the villagers and you talk about how um, people sit on the floor when they eat together because it's a more like a communal space. Then, then I see only a small portion of it catered for that, where you sit down. Then it becomes very ex like it becomes like a showcase, you know. It really becomes like, oh, I purposefully put something over there. And, oh, look, that's how the local people do it. It, 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 then I would totally eliminate this like table chair sitting kind of places and maybe it's all about mats yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's about elevated floors you know it's about coming up and then like lying on the ground eating you know, and stuff like that no <laughs> like I mean it's, it's, it's really true so yeah. I mean it's, I, I think there's so much potential because you're yeah. you're so good with your graphics and yeah. it's like mind blowing like you can produce these kind of things but it's just fundamentally like Maybe the, the 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 first approach to it, you really need to change. Like you really need to think about like, oh, how is it that I can provide this for the village, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then all these people who is coming to visit visit is just subsidiary. Like they can add to it, yeah. And the last point is about the that funneling, the water. I just felt like. In the end, you terminated it with a rainwater oh downpipe. <laughs> it could be more expressive, you know. It mm. could be like a spout that like throws on water, and then you have this pond that yeah. catches it. You know, it could be more dramatic. You mm. know, That's like what your roof is about. It's yeah. about collecting the yeah. water. So but there's so, no. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really like wow, so good your scheme, but like. Uh, <laughs> on the roof part again, uh, like because I, I, I saw the, the image of a traditional roof and then you actually circumvented the whole thing by doing the other way, right? So mm. I don't know whether there's any merit in, in, in putting that, that uh, reference there. The the traditional roof which was typology which which was totally different, right? She she flipped it la right. the value I see in that just from an aesthetic point of view, if we think about Balinese architecture, the vernacular roofs, mm. it really is the undercroft yeah. of the roof that's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Lie there on the stair, yeah. but now yeah. you kind of show it yeah. to the outside. So if you yeah. want that kind of authentic construction and build up, there can be, like your courtyard now is now framed by these roofs. Yeah. So there's something and that, the that way, can yeah. be something quite extraordinary about it mm -hmm. and if but fundamentally once you flip your roof this way you run into a lot of issues because mm -hmm. it's not in the right direction you know you're inviting rain and all yeah. that in mm -hmm. your overhangs have to really scoop even, even longer, uh, which is not a bad thing for you i think it just lends to that mm -hmm. expressiveness mm -hmm. um, but okay we are jumping into a lot of very critical questions here mm -hmm. uh, because your scheme was an immediate standout for okay. us, mm. just to let you know this. Mm. Uh, and so we want this scheme to really work mm. and be convincing. Mm. So we spoke about the functionality of the roof. Does it stop rain from coming in? Do you celebrate the beauty of that vernacular roof mm. form as best as you could? When you scoop water, what happens mm. to that? Does it culminate in something you know just by even if you just do those chains that kind of drips mm -hmm. water down that's yep, yep. beautiful in itself we're not asking for pyrotechnics and <laughs> waterworks <laughs> but thought because that stump at the corner just throws <laughs> us <laughs> off <laughs> right uh yeah. so that's all that um scale is one thing um i think chen ru hits it right on the nail it's now designed more like a visitor center it's like you take the best edits of that village life and you want to show it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's asking for authenticity. Not so much that, oh, we just kind of give you that village so that design adds no value here. Because uh, this is definitely a reinvention of the, of the vernacular. Everything in here sh should and must be designed. In fact, they're designed very well. Like the low hugging furniture and mm. all that floorscapes i think is the next step for you because we don't want it to be a series of just loose chairs mm. and mm. you know that has no place in something like this but i think fundamentally if the scale is big enough for it to be a functioning village and then visitors kind of 
mm-hmm. witness something that that's real that's going on. I think that's where value is. So this needs to function. Um, ecotourism is one thing, but in the mm-hmm. instance when there's a pandemic, so they all just kind of, if something is so free, reliant on um, tourism, mm-hmm. you are risky la, in times like this. Mm-hmm. So they must produce as an industry, they must continue manufacturing. And already you got the ingredients, you have the welcome drink, the herbal drink, right? You mm-hmm. have, wh- what else? Can be uh, yeah, so the That's craft the and then uh, produce and all mm-hmm. that. So it must be something that works. La. Uh, you just need, need to address it, and but I think that may affect the scale of your projects a little bit, because mm-hmm. it now seems quite small. And then we're thinking about homestay. So I mean, someone were to make that stretch all the way down, and they just visit for what, one afternoon, and then that's it. Um, there, yeah, it needs fine. to be. Mm-hmm. You need. You want to be part of this lifestyle, mm-hmm. I think, and mm-hmm. and obviously you know the context very well. This is clearly a project that's executed out of pure passion mm-hmm. and love for the culture. Nah. So and we want you to... Uh, very homesick. Yeah. Uh, uh, Material-wise, I'm not sure how much uh. I'm going to talk about it. It's very sophisticated. Uh-huh. But I feel that right now in this scheme, white walls have no place. Uh, I saw... Uh. Whenever I see a white wall, I feel that that just kind of looks very pristine and painted. It needs to take on some a material that's more for lack of a better word, uh, authentic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I just want to add one point. Uh, I think what's missing in your scheme also is its relation to the environmental context. Mm-hmm. Like I see a lot of what's happening within your compound, yeah. mm-hmm. but I don't see how it relates to like the area around the compound and mm-hmm. maybe even further away. I see some mountains there, but um, I, I wish you played up that relationship mm-hmm. a bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you let people view the mountain from within the space? How do you design for that? Really yeah. engage in the landscapes, right? I mean, yeah. you had that trinity, man, nature, and God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not really seeing that combination yeah. of those three yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, then don't even bring that in. La. It's about the courtyard. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to bring God and all in, you better live <laughs> 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 yeah. up to that promise. La. Uh, it's a courtyard, it's a courtyard. But I think, yeah, 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 maybe you can go a bit deeper. Mm-hmm. Like, really, how do you want to, you know, something about being deeply rooted in that natural landscape, yeah. taking from the land and then pro- mm-hmm. and then yeah. producing out of it responsibly, and you know, just being part of one, right, yeah. in nature. Yeah. That could be one missing link as well. Yeah. But, but it's the first time I've seen such developed yes. landscaping in a yeah. student. Yes. Uh, very, very well. Yeah. It's a very good skill. Yeah. Don't uh, yeah, don't yeah, uh, misunderstand. So much, yeah. 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 There's so much value in the individual uh, yeah. spaces. Yeah. Like the way that you design yeah. the lights and yeah. the structures yeah. upon yeah. the light and yeah. counters. And yeah. just like those those woven yeah. pots yeah. and yeah, yeah. 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 that's mm. scattered around. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely it's, yeah. very well thought out. Yeah. It's yep, a very good scheme, yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Vanessa, and thank you, judges. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. 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 I worry, but cutting short, I worry for you also is that you are so confident and... Com- She's so confident. <laughs> so, confident so, so confident and acom- feeling accomplished right now that you mm. don't push yourself further through the next round. Now. If you get the truth yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you, judges. Right. At this point, I'd just like to uh, remind the contestants again, you have been picked out of a fair bit of uh, entries. And you are here because you're, you have done something wonderful to your project. There's something to be offered to this table for the judges. And that's why you are chosen. So the judges today are giving you tips, advice, to think a lot more further, to think a lot more deeper to, to your projects. And uh, we hope that it will give you a more, uh, what do you call it, um, a deeper and wider perspective about what goes out there in the world, right? And what is, what is uh, considered what we call a sustainable or a feasible project right, out there in the market. Yeah. Welcome back everyone to this 
second half of the uh, interior designers category for our EYDA finals. So now we'd like to call upon Charles Chiu to present his project. Good morning, judges. I'm Charles, and I'll be presenting my project, Multi-Gen Library. And so, my design um, focuses on the clients of being multi-generational, also multi-gen, um, being of three generations, grandparents, parents, and kids, and um, the potential client could be MSF, um, NLB and um, the National Heritage Board. Each one for each different um, like point to strengthen families, gain knowledge, and raise heritage awareness. So the concept statement is for the library. That is for the three different different generations to help them bond through a journey. The design of the building to uh, promote seamless flow of bonding between our family members through social development raising heritage awareness, and increasing gain in knowledge. So how I came up with the design was that, first of all, um, through the planning layout, I found the grid. And from this grid, I planned out where the cores would be and where the front landscape could potentially be. And then with the remaining spaces, it could be used to form um, what could be called as in the inclined path, or in this case, the ramps they help to transverse from one side of the building to the other through, uh, I mean, from bottom to top, left to right. Okay, and then, um, so as, you, as the flow of the path from the lower point to the upper point, in between, there are steps and also resting points where family members can gather together on the inclined pathway. So for the full architectural design, first of all, the hill that was once placed there is now peeled upwards, forming a form of roof. And then the central main base is placed within to allow the existence of the cores to allow this building to function as the cores are the heart. And then within this, the flow of the incline pathway that helps connect from one point to the other, lower to higher. And then within this, a forest of columns is placed to help divide the different spaces that exist within this building. And as a queued up hill is too, um, I would say, it might be too endeavoring or like uh, frightened potentially to people. So the hill is now cascaded downwards into a proper roof that helps to respond to the surrounding and not make it look so imposing as compared to the ROM next door. Mm -hmm. After that, for, for the sites, louvers that also acts as bookshelves are placed to allow the building to have a form of um, ventilation. Or also allow for a form of um, protection. And then eventually, um, greenery is added to this building so they can blend into its surrounding. <coughs> The exploded axonometric showcases um, the different components that make up this building. How the green roof is actually an open space where anyone can interact over there with um, their family members and have different activities, yoga or potentially um, have concerts. Within below is the incline pathway where anyone can walk, not having to even take stairs and can interact with each other on the different steps. And then below is the more quiet zone where people would like to enjoy like reading books in a quiet place together with their families all alone, they can do so. The location plan where it's located. The basement floor plan where the drop-off point for the car park is. At the same time, it acts as an open concept form of drop-off point where they can um, quickly access to the quiet zone of the library. That's the course, the reading area, the quiet zone. And then from here, the level one plan, where the incline pathway starts, and at the and below the incline pathway is actually like a small reading area, potentially for kids, as it's like uh, beanbags. 
and at the back is the cafe where they can still enjoy refreshments. After that, the incline pathway continues with various seats for them to uh, enjoy. And then um, from here, the incline pathway connects to the roof through the lowest point of the roof. And then after that, it also connects to the outside. So it acts as a form of loop where the roof actually can loop from the outside to the inside. Um, this is the front elevation. Um, left elevation showcasing the louvers. Front elevation also the louvers. And then from the back where people can enter through the, the fog canning path above. A section to showcase the incline pathway. And a section to showcase the varying volumes. And then um, section details that help to showcase um, the construction of certain parts of the building. And then the sectional perspective that uh, would help to showcase how the people can interact with the different parts of the building, the different volumes, and how they can slowly go from one place to the other. Uh, okay, uh, perspective, front perspective. Then this would be the quiet zone where there is a green wall, but also acts as a form of like waterfall where they can enjoy a quiet, peaceful place, but with nice tranquil noises. Then for the concierge, the area where people will go, will go to see, uh, where people who seek information can actually go to there and then, uh, well, get information. Or rather, they can also <coughs> like look at and pick up books over there as well. Um, the, the, the how to say the kid zone where people can rest there and on the other on the right side is the kid zone where people can rest there and then on the left side is where the, the cafe is. And then the incline pathway where books uh, line up across the pathways for easy access and also close by are the seating areas where they can enjoy the family members. The lower access to the roof, the green roof. And then the upper access to the green roof, where people can access from the Fort Canning Park. And then, yes, uh, the full view of the green roof. Uh, potential plans that I might think of implementing to the building. And then, uh, sorry? Why were you laughing at that? Were you forced to do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, go on. Uh, photos of my physical model that, well, I do not have possession of now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then I just want to showcase the inner pathway. Then uh, this is a view.
Right, thank you, Charles. Uh, judges? Yeah. Was just wondering whether you entered into the wrong category. <laughs> yeah. It's a very, uh, very um, competent architecture it's project. It's a whole architecture yeah. project. Um, yeah. Sorry, well, my first question is uh, how you mentioned uh, you started with the grid, right? But I don't quite understand how you arrived at that grid. How you derived at the grid? That's yeah, is it by spacing oh, or uh, something? Can you show yeah, the there's so, definitely uh, certain logic to it that you have oh. not explained. That's the chunkiest bookshelf I've ever seen. It's full of books. <laughs> One stack. One <laughs> shell is. Uh, something or like a. Yes. Oh, how, yeah, yeah. How, okay. how did you get here? <laughs> uh, well, it was through a lot of uh, trial and error and <laughs> thorough processing because um, it started off with like the area mm -hmm. of the site and then um, due to architectural restrictions cutting of corners and then eventually <laughs> trying, to <laughs> <laughs> trying to place it into a nice form where a grid mm. can properly... Sorry, wait. What's can can you just explain? There are wide spacing, <laughs> narrow spacing. Like narrow what does that grid, mean? Yeah. And there are these two interjecting oh, the blocks. Interjecting. What does that mean? Yeah. Two inter interjecting blocks. Let's but be specific. When it changes direction, like, why do you decide to change, change direction the there and maybe not lower? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I... Technically, um, for the oops, what's what's the grid spacing? The grid spacing, um, most of them I think are four, uh, four point five meters. Okay, why why four point five? What's the most? It's, it's the central area, and then okay. the thinner ones, I think are like lesser. Um, can we? Uh, yeah. Look at the one with the zoning. Oh, the zoning. Yeah. This one, yeah. Yes. What's the logic here? Uh, also, the grid is now your you derive your floor plans from this grid, which you have still not been able to explain. <laughs> we will leave it uh, yeah. there. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, go on. Uh, yeah, and then um, you started with peeling the landscape, right? The, yes. But then you up a few steps down, then you kind of drop the idea. So then you're gonna do cascading landscapes. So uh, I thought that was uh, maybe a pity that you didn't oh, continue yeah. with that that cute landscape idea. Mm -hmm. The cute yeah. landscape. Yeah. 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 Kind of yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was, was kind of afraid that if the like landscape was too high up, then you would like make it look very imposing. Uh, then the then it's up to you to design it in a friendly way, right? Mm, that's true. I thought this was quite oh, interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I also have questions about the ventilation. Is your building naturally ventilated? Yeah, you mentioned just now. Yeah, like, like, so because it's totally what 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 we didn't imagine it to be. Yeah, when we, yeah. When we saw the the, the bookshelves yeah. and then the, the it's open to yeah. the outside. Yeah, so I think is there glass? I think there's glass. Uh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um. There's actually so for like this part. Uh. Only, I suppose only like the, the ground floor is open ventilated okay. and the roof. So, so the main library space itself is air conditioned? Is supposedly air conditioned. Supposedly, okay. Yes. And, <laughs> and then you also mentioned that the green wall and water feature <laughs> inside the library space, right? Yes. I, I think that's very bad for the books because oh. you're going to have a lot of moisture yeah. or your books will become moldy. So uh, oh, okay. you have to consider that. Murderer of poetic intentions. I like that. <laughs> Water, sound, reading, space when you arrive. Yeah. Yeah, but think about the books. Think about the books, yeah. <laughs> is, it a, is it an archive or is it a, uh, a transitory it. space for the books? Mm, yeah, yeah. 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 More, mm. more rigid books can be placed yeah. in More rigid books. <laughs> more rigid, yeah. Kids' books coated in plastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time you don't have books anymore, it's just, uh, just yeah, QR codes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just QR code. just read on your phone, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. But, oh. but, uh, but some of your 3D views from the outside did remind me of tombs. So it yeah. might be. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that too. It's a cemetery oh. for books, so yeah, you yeah, kind of yeah, destroy yeah. the books with your. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you did not say that. <laughs> but not not nothing. It's just not a. It's not nice. I I I, I don't like. I enjoy the cemetery. Yeah. I, I like and the cemetery. And I would I would love to visit this building actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and I, I think um, also in general, maybe your rendering and your graphic quality, graphic quality needs to improve. Oh, yeah. But I, I think design-wise, I, I do like it. I do like the architecture. I do like the interior spaces. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's for you to improve on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Respond to the site, but you have to explain to us why why it's like shaped in such a way also. Mm -hmm. You couldn't. Can we go to the location plan? Location plan. We just skip by that page. Hmm. Mm. Okay. If you could derive some kind of logic behind the mm. different axes from a more macro oh. point of view that could help you learn. Yeah. You really have to explain your grid. That grid is everything, right? Mm. Yeah, you have to first convince us of that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm glad I heard you speak. The scheme was impressive when we saw it because there's a certain quiet confidence in peeling up that mm -hmm. slope. And then the value of this scheme is actually in that ramp. You know that also. Yeah. La. Mm -hmm. And that really forms the spaces for you. There are many fundamental questions that need to be answered. Uh, you clearly have not thought through um, a lot of things, whether or not your building is ventilated, whether there's glass, you contradict yourself a few times um, in the presentation. Uh, but well, you're clearly a very intelligent individual, like there's a lot of um, intelligence in the scheme. Demonstrate that. Uh, also brush up on the finesse of your presentation skills. This is so poor. Like it looks like a PowerPoint template. It's not even a template. You just click there, text, location plan. That's it. Never never choose the form or nothing. Yeah. Luckily not comic signs. Um can we go to the interiors? I also love how your front elevation looks like a section. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, all in all, it's a very exquisite yeah. piece of work. Yeah. Just that the intentions are not so clear, yeah. which made me a bit disappointed when I oh, heard yeah. you explain it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you're very cute. Uh, you have certain <laughs> <laughs> eagerness about you. Um, mm. Yeah, get a bit more disciplined yeah, and brush up the work. Uh, you see just now that, that, that section. Uh, that yeah, this is all the work. Yeah, right? This one, this one. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the tall mm. space behind. Yeah, like, that's, that's the waterfall, right? Yes. Mm. Okay. I find that the quality of the space is really very, very good. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Just that the way you choose to. Yeah, like these kind of throwaway mm. cafe. Oh, yeah, uh, mm. and the way you the, the wood texture is done, like mm. the scale is oh, yeah. not great. So, yeah, but the architecture, the spaces are amazing. Actually, yeah. mm. why didn't your green wall go all the way up? Like, you know, like because oh, yeah, there's a gap between the wall that's the, uh, and that's the bar there, is it? Oh yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's where the water exits. Mm. Mm. Yeah, from here, you can really connect all the way back to mm -hmm. the exteriors, yeah, draw yeah. that in, yeah. and that's the first impression. Yeah. I think that would be really quite yeah. Um, yeah. stunning. The yeah, proportion of your bookshelves are like, I don't know, mm -hmm. how thick are they? Uh, 300, 300 mm. I mean, thickness, the... Depth. The, the thickness, the thickness is 300 mm. All the depth. Is it 100? Yeah. Oh, the, the depth of the bookshelves. The thickness. Thickness. Uh, I think about... 600? Oh, I don't know, it's a bit deep here, but it's yeah. No, no, it's in the, the, yeah, shelf, the shelf thickness. Oh, the thickness is yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm really, really deep. Uh, 300. Uh, 300. 
300. 300 is like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, should, you should go back. 30 and then, cm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, or, or, or 3 cm. I'm talking about the, the, the plank thickness. The, thickness. Yeah. Yeah. You're giving me that, you're giving me height. Thick, <laughs> plank yeah, thickness. Plank thickness. <laughs> Yes! What is the thickness? <laughs> because they look quite thick. 20 cm. 20? 20? That's 20 not 20. 20. Like yeah. It looks like it's a it hundred. Like hundred. Like hundred. Oh, yeah, 10, yeah. 10 cm. Yeah. Mm. 10 cm is really very thick. That's, oh. what, that's what we were saying. Like, it looks very chunky. chunky. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just kind of... Because it's so thick, it eliminates usable height. La. Oh. Like, you lost a whole good row of shells, maybe. Because... Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I get it because you need that certain chunkiness mm -hmm. to that frame. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. I I just wanted to <laughs> find out how much you understand your skin, uh, and yeah. clearly you don't. <laughs> but, yeah, um, or maybe you know all these things, but just kind of you know, unarticulate. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think you should also be confident of your the, the spacing and yeah. also what you draw in, right? Because mm. it's your project, so you you need to know like how. I mean, when you draw in you, using this modeling program, you you actually already know what you are drawing in. So mm -hmm. yeah, you don't need to be like exact to like maybe like you tell me like four 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 six five zero mm, but you need to know what the spacing mm -hmm. like. The rough space. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's just maybe in the way that you answer, you seem very uncertain, is it about... Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. You, um, you just be factual. Mm. Um, yeah. You're more confident the reason, about yeah. yeah, sorry. Mm. The, the reason behind that is because uh, mm. uh, right, right now I'm uh, serving action service. Oh. Then oh. this work was done like mm. uh, a few months ago. Oh. And so oh. I haven't really touched my own work in a while. Okay. okay. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Then yeah. 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 I couldn't really <laughs> find time also for you. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But back to the work itself. Yeah. I think if you just um, and just now that view, oh. spaces where views where we just see the mm -hmm. architecture and the raw materials, amazing like the reception concierge yeah. view. Yep. That yep. was yep. beautiful. Yep. Yep. Spaces yep. like this celebrate your what you have more. Yeah. Yeah. Don't clutter it up so much with all that jumble of furniture. Okay. Choose your furniture selection mm -hmm. where you I'm not saying build in everything. I mean, yeah, here with guys who really appreciate the value of great design products. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Put them in your spaces. Yeah. Find beautiful chairs, beautiful tables. Um, it makes a world of difference. Those very slanted, skewed lines for visuals tend to be very disorienting. Oh. Set your views to two point perspective as much as you can. Um, yeah, because otherwise you get a very leaning kind of effect. Um, yeah. Maybe it's intentional, like mm -hmm. you're going to Zaha Hadid route or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. Um, well, we're just talking about presenting, final presentation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's nice, nice yeah, with all the light. Yeah. 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 The sunlight is also bad for the books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Sorry, I care about the books. <laughs> <laughs> First moisture, then yeah. UV. <laughs> for, for the uh, glass facade that exists behind the books, it actually yeah, exists. Um, it's uh, made, uh, so the, the type of like ceramic fritz glass. Mm. So okay. it helps to reduce the amount of light okay, that you Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so you need to explain all this that yeah. to show that you've thought about all this uh, yeah. more practical things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know all yeah. these things. Yeah. yeah. No, and then has really done a number on you. <laughs> I don't quite appreciate the division between old cafe for adults, bean bags for kids. In fact, I like the bean bag area. Oh, it's really, it's really, like last time I went in, I was uh, it seems to engage with the space. It's very casual. <laughs> Again, it's that throwaway. What's that chair called? Oh, uh, people are belonging that now. Yeah, like oh, colleagues. Yeah. Colleagues. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about your landscaping because I think probably I was like mm. asking you like what is yes. your landscaping scheme upstairs. Mm, yeah. So maybe we look at your roof plan a bit. Mm. Yeah. 
Okay, mm, yeah. Okay. So what I really nice, enjoyed nice. is that you really integrated with the fog tanning. So it's like nice that the building is tucked inside. That's why we were mm. very like excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Then I think maybe subsequently, like if you want to improve the scheme or in other future projects, you can start to think about gardens as not just as an aesthetic uh, kind of um, uh, interaction. So mm. gardens can also be very educational. So mm. gardens can also be very physical in that sense. So maybe if you can spend just a bit of time to just design the roof form mm. to kind of uh, involve people to really be engaged with the gardening yeah. or to be kind of like just have a little bit more varied vegetation mm. because mm. The it could be the library yeah. garden you know? yes yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it need not be like monolithic in that sense like mm. one two three then maybe that will already solve the graveyard situation yeah <laughs> because the because even if you if you do this terracing down then maybe like once the the like like a very more organic garden would to take place, then the skylight will be a different shape as well because you just need light to come in. You don't need it to be rectangular in that oh. sense. So mm. then once that happens, then mm. the whole schemes becomes very organic, then maybe then it will soften the rigidity of it a little bit. Yeah. Mm. I like yeah. the rectangles though. Oh yeah. So yeah, then it depends on what direction <laughs> you would like to take in yeah, that yeah, sense. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. I would develop the hardscape a bit more. Like yeah. Have some uh, hard uh, area, yeah, 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 area yeah, and then maybe some stats yeah, make yeah, it with the green. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll make yeah, it really yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like a second layer of yeah. the library yeah, we have. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Next, I'd like to welcome our oh. last one. Last Sorry. finalist for today. Mm. John Metzor to present his project. <laughs> Always sucks to be the last one. I'm always tired. <laughs> we are the most energetic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will turn on my presentation board. Turn on. <laughs> Please do. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, judges. Today I'll be sharing with you more about my visual arts incubator. Uh, I am from uh, Nian Polytechnic. Yeah. Mm. Oops, this laptop. Can I just use the keyboard? Okay. So, for context, Singapore has a vibrant art scene and it's home to a diverse range of art groups and establishing art establishments. And throughout the years, the arts and cultural landscape has evolved. And there are a myriad number of art centers varying in size and facilities as seen on this image. Um, so it's no doubt that you know, fostering such art spaces play an important role in placemaking and adds vibrancy to our city. So in fact, a study done by the Singapore Cultural Statistics in 2019 revealed that Singapore's art and culture scene has been booming with events and museums drawing record numbers. So it has achieved the highest record of um, 13.6 million since 2013. So upon investigation, it had happened that many of these art venues were actually located near the civic district, where it had a great amount of rich heritage and history. Um, over the years, many of these heritage monuments were um, redeveloped for modern usage, such as um, exhibitions or galleries. So this actually created a hot spot at these areas where you know lots of art events pre-COVID had happened. And additionally, to further support these kind of events to happen, the Urban Redevelopment Authority or URA has plans to um, Introduce new new street life to kind of vibrant, make it more vibrant, make it a walkable art and cultural precinct. So while there is a strong public interest in an increasing amount of art spaces for emerging arts and art groups, this comes to a question of whether it really actually means that we we'll get to see more of our local artists starting up. Unfortunately, that might not be the case. The arts in the time of the pandemic has never been easy for anyone, and most artists end up failing 
and going in the gut. And as a result, many individual artists are facing a number of struggles like the lack of tools or maybe getting a name out there. And there are many struggles which will actually discourage them to start up. And moving forward, there actually needs to be a solution to tackle these issues. So with the issue in hand, where would the ideal site be, right? So, um, so the site for this project will be um, located at the base of Fort Canning Hill, similar to my friends. So this is actually quite appropriate as this site is close to the hot spots mentioned previously, where the art scene usually gather around. So with its key strategic location, an informal response to the myriad number of museums and exhibitions in the vicinity was adopted. So what if there was a local program that fosters the creation and something more than just another exhibit in the area? Um, maybe perhaps the idea of an art incubation space? So by definition, an art incubator is the combination of these aspects, the physical co-location of art groups, with a strong focus on organizational development, the shared resources, the technical assistance, and the strong emphasis on collaboration. So as such, I propose a visual arts incubator that is designed to facilitate the growth of the art scene and local collectives through um, educational sharing and creation spaces. Ultimately, it's a platform where local arts and culture can flourish and it aims to support and profile the local budding artists and entrepreneurs to create a community of like-minded individuals. So, um, so with these three steps of incubation, um, the, studio, the, the studio environment created provides a physical space for the users to engage in their personal projects as well as develop their business opportunities. Actually, the emphasis is to really promote the interaction between the artists and the users of different collective experiences, the public, to encourage cross-disciplinary collaboration. And also, um, with the added convenience of its location, the incubators or the young bodies artists can also access facilities and resources such as the many um, exhibits, and also consult mentors on their art advisors and any matters they have. All right. So the time has passed, you should bring us to the scheme. Yeah, half the time has passed. Okay. So by understanding the potential needs of the users, relationships could be forged, allowing for a long-term interaction of different users, which will benefit each other. I will speed up. Alright, so let me show you the final product. Okay, I'm not sure why the video is copy. I think it's, it's okay. a playback. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Okay. So let's begin with the design process. So firstly, the spaces are zoned into public, informal, hybrid, and private formal. This is to respond to the existing RM building where the public spaces are adjacent to the, the building. Next, the central hybrid volume is then twisted to highlight its importance. The celebration of this key feature space, which was the Timber Exhibition Gallery. Next, to create a great amount of visual access to this key volume, the, main, the volume is lifted up and externally there's also great views out. And the spaces are also clustered around to create pockets of um, board spaces that will allow you to look into the main exhibition space. Mm -hmm. So moving on, the volumes at the site are set back to respond to the to this context mm -hmm. and it also helps to soften the, the facade of the building. And uh, as a form of sustainable design, uh, pockets of green are incorporated, which will help to actually in improve the interior and the microclimate of the space. Mm -hmm. And lastly, a physical connection to the hill behind is, is added. And furthermore, um, intensive roof gardens and planter boxes try to, um, it, it helps to mitigate the transition from the hill to the building. Mm -hmm. So next, I'll be moving on to some of the design strategies. So firstly, it's the use of this grid language, which plays a part in suggesting the incubation spaces. Actually, this grid design language is taken inspiration from a grid notebook, where it might be the start for ideas to be generated. This design detail is rationalized by the level of privacy your space needs. So for example, the exhibition space on the top will be more easily accessed and hence a fully permeable grid-like structure, as compared to when artist studio where there might be more concerns about privacy uh, frame windows are placed just for the artist to showcase his key works. Secondly, the design promotes a major cost ventilation thoroughfares as it's open on both axes and it also engages with the hill behind as the building is broken up and there's this courtyard garden at the back. And this allows natural ventilation to flow in from the back through to the front. Mm -hmm. And lastly, as mentioned, green spaces are integrated throughout to enhance the microclimate and also acts as an extension from the hill behind. As you can see, the main timber volume really stands out as a key space in this in these schemes. Okay. Okay. So moving on, let's look at the programmatic breakdown. So majority of the space is um, dedicated to the art incubation spaces, which are the cyan color, and a very distinct public and private zoning is observed here. All the most of the yellow color um, public spaces are all on the side of the RM, and the exhibition space in the middle actually encourages human traffic throughout, as it's a shorter route from one point to the other. All right, so now I will run through with you the sequence of spaces. First, you arrive at the arrival plaza where you are greeted by pockets of greenery and, and sky uh, light well. This is the main lobby where light floods in from the feature spiral staircase. And moving on to the second floor, this is the exhibition space with a, a, a floating garden. So, um, so this shows a section perspective of that space where it's actually made out of mass engineered timber. Um, so this is the detail for it. Yeah, for fire, fire code. This is the communal lounge and terrace deck where possible events can occur. The exhibition gallery at night, where it's able to host uh, a variety of mediums of art, such as digital art. So this is the exhibition space from the outside. The volume is actually 
chlorine and this this um, this showcases the difference between let's say an artist studio and a and a more public exhibition space where the great elements are are, are, um, are showcased here. And this is one of the art studios where actually people from the communal lounge can actually look in to see what's happening. And this allows for an exchange of ideas and, and collaboration as you don't actually necessarily have to be a part of the class to learn, learn new things. And this is the rooftop deck. So the building overlooks the city and it provides a good view for those even coming from the Fort Canning Fair behind and it is an extension of the hill. And that comes the end of my presentation. This is the night shot. Thank you. Very nice. Um, I'd like now to invite the judges for questions, advice or comments. Maybe back, back to the, the first part of the presentation mm -hmm. where you were talking about uh, how this how you want to connect the different was it your intent? I actually got lost half, halfway through also. You were trying to connect like the between the artists the different gallery yeah, the, the art spots and also the artists, right? Mm -hmm. How does it translate into this scheme? Well um you wanna bring us to the earlier slide. Yeah. Well, um, it's, well, the idea is that mm. you know all these existing buildings are more of exhibition spaces, and there is a lack of a, a, a key creation space mm -hmm. where you know people can come and create their stuff here, and they can actually distribute mm. to all these different little hotspots around the area. Mm. Yeah, so it's an incubation space at the, at the central location. Okay, and, and these five squares that you were pointing to, mm -hmm. are, are they... Uh, no, it doesn't represent anything on the map. It's, a, it's just a concept, conceptual diagram. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, so. mm. Maybe just follow up mm. with what he has said. I mm. think the, the, the key point that what we are trying to, to kind of like um, pinpoint and ask you is that mm. who are the users user group? Mm -hmm. Who are you targeting the most? Because why I asked it, uh, first backtrack a bit, like the site mm. itself is uh, given to you by the tutors or you have to choose uh, that by particular? The or by the tutors. So you, mm. I, I cannot fault you on that really. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> <laughs> what no, what, why, why, I, why I do talk about this, uh, like something that is equivalent to what you're doing would be like the National Art Gallery, I mean the Singapore Design Centre, mm. which is actually a retrofit of like the uh, existing building and then they kind of like rent it out for studios to to come in and then they, they do that. So um, they also kind of have this idea of like general public coming in and to be able to interact with the with the people who is working there, which I don't think really happens. But uh, for example, this is the kind of space that you're looking at, right? Yeah. So I think the first few fundamental questions that I want to ask is the proportion of what you give to the studio people to incubate mm. versus people who are coming into the space. Mm. Because let's say poor <laughs> designers who wants a studio space, right? And you're giving them a prime spot, right? I'm just thinking, I know this is, I'm just trying to pull your project back into a bit, I'm trying to give it a little bit more realistic grounding, right? Mm -hmm. Then the question becomes like, how many offices can you host? So I, I, I look at your plan, I look at about approximately at 14, mm -hmm. for example, or something like that. But the whole mess of this building, if I can only host 14 studios, then it's like, I don't know how it justifies in terms of your construction costs and the, the final people that you want to incubate, you know, like, you understand what I'm trying to say? So I, I understand that you're trying to mix them together, like, oh, bring in the public, then they can look, there's events, it's vibrant and stuff like that. But I'm very worried that the people who you really want to fundamentally help may not be able to access this very nice real estate that you provided for them. 
because it's just like I imagine right let's say if you can choose your side then the equivalent of that will be like why not take over this like very shady industrial area and then you just give mm -hmm. more bigger space and lower cost and people could go in you know yeah my and question was why can't I mean how is this scheme better than let's say we just take an old school building and mm -hmm. turn it into studios mm -hmm. right you need to be able to answer that yeah I, I as in like I just wanted to see whether you uh, I because I understand that you probably, I mean, it's nice. It has very nice, vibrant space. It's just fundamentally like, who is your target audience? Mm -hmm. Who are you trying to, so what problem are you actually trying to solve here? Because even if I get people to come in, they're not going to spend and it's not going to be like, yeah. it's not going to be sustainable. So what is the main objective of this building? Like, is it to really nurture the local creative industry or yeah. is it like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really main, mainly targeting the, the art industry mm -hmm. and the, the, the other people, the public, will help to support them. How? Because um, when artists are starting up, yes. they really have a lack of exposure and, and money. And money. <laughs> so it's really hard to get their, their name out there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and as for the spaces, um, Majority of them are, while well, it's capable of maybe art workshops, yeah. it could actually be turned into an artist studio. Yes. For yes. If, if in mm. the time where it needs more, more space. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I almost feel like you, you should invent all the spaces. So the very nice box in the middle are actually the incubation space mm. and the exhibition yes. space around. So people driving past, right? They're gonna see artists working in their studio. Mm. Not my. Yeah. yeah. And, mm. I, and I think it goes back to mm. uh, Jen Rue's point mm. about Vanessa's project just now. Mm. Is it for the tourists or mm. are you doing this for the people there? So mm. are you doing this for visitors or are you doing this for the artists? Mm. So mm. it's a very important very question to, yeah. to consider. Yeah. yeah, exactly that. My fundamental, I wouldn't say issue, but I mean, my conundrum or what I can't get over it is that this scheme seems very much focused on that central lantern. Mm. The central mm. showcase, right? You, it's really about the showcase that you forgot about the studios, which is actually the heart of this. Mm. You are basically trying to provide a workspace for mm. struggling artists. Mm. Uh, you're not celebrating that very clearly. Like the in the scheme itself, those portions are the whitewash, very institutional looking spaces. Mm. They look very unthought of. They look very functional. And all that you invested was in that lantern where I think going backwards to your earlier slide, where what you want to really achieve with this scheme is to, um, you said darkness, right? In darkness, the artists uh, face certain challenges yeah. and you want to give them that glimpse of light and that's why you have this thing la. Mm -hmm. so it should be all creation space incubation space mm -hmm. and it's all display space we are just basically visitors weave through mm -hmm. production space and the whole building should celebrate that mm -hmm. no matter where you go uh, if you can bring certain notions of commerce into it maybe la, like mm -hmm. so that um, I don't know because you said it's an art industry instead of using a term scene la, so there's a certain expectation of commerce and Production. output. Mm, yeah. <laughs> this is basically a yeah. glorified sweatshop yeah. for artists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's in fact actually a mm. gift shop at the first floor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. How much is it going to sell? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, well, basically conceive of the whole thing as one unified whole, uh, but a very complex network of different types of spaces, maybe they adapt, but showcase everywhere. So. Uh, that's one of my first response to looking at the visuals. If we go to, let's say, your 3D views. How do you get angle on the tilt? Mm. Is it, or you tilt at the central volume, but is it based on anything that you got the angle from? Or it's just um, intuitive? It's just intuitive. Okay. Um, it's, it's just to adjust the, the courtyard at the side to make sure it's comfortable. Okay.
Yeah, the surrounding C-shaped building. One of my first questions was, is that tree existing? Like, are you in certain years? It's looking weird, but it's all new, right? Mm. So um, it now looks like that showcase is wedged between the existing architecture. If it's not the case, I think the whole thing needs to be a showcase. I think immediately your scheme will feel much more unified. But not to take away from what you have achieved so far, if we go to the interiors, yeah. Pretty cool slideshow, by the way, oh. that you had yeah. different things going on. Like, how do you do it? <laughs> Are you looking for an internship? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this. this uh, thing uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe not so much yeah. this one. Um, this was one view that everyone yeah. kind yeah. of yeah, yeah, likes a funny. lot. Uh, how you kind of stream in landscapes. Yeah. Uh, Kind of weave that in through the spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. Uh, yeah. I, I thought the fly through had some funny moments when the camera dashed through the the landscape area uh, uh, and then it, it moved through the gap to go to the upper yeah. floor. Mm -hmm. It was nice, yeah. Yep, yep. The white boxes, you said they're floating landscapes. Why are they so bare and barren? They just look like white floating boxes with nothing in them. It's got things in it. The planter boxes with the plants on top. There, yeah. there are plants sticking out now. Yeah. Okay. Why are they floating? Why are they floating? Um, it so takes great effort to maintain <laughs> plants at that height. Why are they? <laughs> but I can barely see them. I can only see the bottom of your white box. There's a, there's a second story. Oh, so it's for the guys on top. Yep. So here we sense white boxes. Yeah. Quite cool. The building is new. Haven't plants haven't grown yet. So you drip down. Yeah. Then I think it would be nicer. I like how you kind of detailed the railings as well in a very unified way, yeah. like a veil around yeah. and integrated the handrails and all that. I thought that was quite uh, impressive. We also love that holographic scene, yeah. whereby the art just kind of exists in the middle of the space. But that led us to wonder where is the art? Because if this grid is meant to showcase the art it's very uninhabited right now it's not charged with what it's meant to do right now it's just showcasing your space lab, not yeah. so much the art mm. yeah. yeah what's there that rising sun behind is that a I sun? love it yeah <laughs> i love your yeah. graphic style by the yeah. way even your technical details can look cool yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but, but I think some images, the scale of the people may be a bit wrong. Mm. Like the ones with the people sitting down, I can't remember which, which scene really. Oh. Yeah, I just, you just have to... No, I think there was one at night, I think the night scene or something. I don't know whether it was a bit distorted or... Yeah, this... Yeah. The, the, or, or the table's very... Like, I don't know, like... It feels a bit like off. Something, something is, is off. uncomfortable. Yeah. Is the table too yeah. high? Are the yeah. posts too big? Yeah. Are the people too small? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, like you've seen, uh, like Dennis mentioned, that all the rooms for the artists are very institutional. I think mm. this really shows that quality. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a certain sadness. <laughs> 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 Either wrap them in the same grid or wrap them in the plants. Yeah, uh, yeah, you even have an exit sign. Yeah. yeah, the exit sign. And then those two guys in the exit. The most hateful <laughs> thing in. Why do you have an exit sign? This is very compliant. Pass, yeah. pass. Yeah. But, <laughs> pass building. Yeah, code. but the, the, the execution is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Pretty cool. Yeah. Are you very involved in the art scene? Is that why you went this way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. When you're doing <laughs> Why is that giggling? When you're doing architecture, you don't have time to, to be involved. But I try to dabble in here and there. Okay. What do you dabble with? Yeah. Um, I do watercolor painting. Nice. Oh, okay. yeah. Did you go and see Art Week going on right now? Uh, no, I didn't manage to. Yeah, no time, no time. No, I mean, if you go and see yeah. the kind of okay. work yeah. that people are producing, then you can kind of visualize who yeah. are the people using these spaces. <laughs> this is like, yeah. yeah. like childcare, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like those people are cool like you. You you yeah. will yeah, you, yeah, yeah, it needs to be a space yeah. that 
probably not those colors. Uh, not maybe. not maybe not so much design, yeah. but just yeah. like a just a space for bang, yeah. very slate, you know, a yeah. framework for mm-hmm. someone to come in and mm-hmm. inhabit and make it their own with yeah. their art and you yeah. know produce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Produce like a set shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It is what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, finalists. So that's our last one, and so we will now take a break while the judges uh, deliberate. Deliberate over the the words that have been presented, mm. and we will be back again in ten minutes, hopefully. What do we need to decide? Yeah. Good afternoon once again and a very warm welcome to everyone. I guess the, the 10 minutes wait has been quite exciting for everyone. But we are now ready to announce the results. Um, for everyone's information, we will do the announcement but the actual uh, prize presentation will be done offline. First and foremost, we'd like to thank all the judges uh, for the very hard work today for their very uh, enriching comments and advice and we hope all the finalists will uh, benefit from all of it. Yes, and uh, other than the judges, all right, uh, we also like to thank all the schools, the lecturers and professors for taking the time to encourage the students to join this AYDA competition. Alright, without further ado, let us announce the results. First, we like to give out the Best Use of Colour Award. The Best Use of Colour Award goes to Ariel Regina Walminer from Temasek Polytechnic. Congratulations! Next, we like to give out the Best Green Innovation Award. The award goes to Charles T. from Neon Polytechnic. Next, getting very, very exciting now. Moving on to the top three awards. Bronze. The Bronze Award. Goes to Charles Q. The Silver Award goes to Priscilla's Mary Rian Delario. And now for the Gold Award. <laughs> The Gold Award goes to <laughs> Vanessa Vijaya. <laughs> we like to uh, give appreciation uh, awards to Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts. our Asia Young Designer Award 2021. Thank you for joining in our session. Uh, we are very, very sorry that we are unable to bring everyone you know, to a physical location so that you can really see all the entries in person and of course to mingle with our top finalists as well as our judges. But no worries, we will look forward to a better year, hoping that we will get to see each other the next round. 
With this, we will end the session uh, via Zoom and we'll proceed to our prize giving. Uh, for all winners, of course, uh, including the institution and best mentor, uh, we will contact you shortly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.